Welcome everybody. In this video the new snow load calculator and how to use it will be explained. In this video, snow loads will be calculated according to Eurocode 1 and calculated loads will be applied to a model using the load editor. As you all know, part 3 of the Eurocode 1 describes how civil engineers need to calculate snow loads. Snow load calculations are located under loading tab in the ribbon menu. When you wait on the command, the hint window opens and provides information about the use of the command. When we examine our sample model, we see a multi-pitch truth system. At the same time, the roof is surrounded by parapets, and the structure includes a canopy. Now let's open the snow load calculator and examine how the calculations are made. There are two sections in the snow load calculator called geometry and load cases. In the geometry section, there are the settings that the code wants us to apply regarding the entire roof system. At the same time, we can determine the snow load parameters from this section. Then, Protostructure presents the drifted and undrifted snow load values in the load cases section by making the necessary calculations, and we can take these values and apply them to the building model. Let's go to the geometry section and make the geometric settings in the sample model. The snow load regulation has classified roof loads into five different categories. Monopitch truth, pitch truth, multi-span roof, roof abutting and close to taller construction works, and cylindrical roofs. Sketches of the roofs are also included in the preview window. Let's choose a multi-span roof system in accordance with the sample model. Then let's set the geometric settings as 1000 cm 500 cm roof height 150 cm. Similarly, we do the same for the second roof. Here, too, we have a roof with a height of 150 cm. The slope angles of the roof are calculated automatically by the program. As we continue, we see the canopy, obstruction and snow fence options. Hint buttons have been added to show how to activate these options. By pressing the hint button, we can explore the necessary directions. For example, exceptional drift must be included for the calculation of canopy loads. So we should activate the accidental design in the lower right corner and check the exceptional drift case here. Then we can adjust the geometric placement of the canopy by selecting the canopy. Let's determine the settings of this canopy, which is 400 cm below from the roof and 300 cm wide. Then we move on to the obstruction option. Obstructions may be a chimney on the roof, a construction or any equipment, and in these cases, there will be snow accumulation so we should include them in the calculation of drifted snow loads. Here again, we can calculate the drifted snow load by adjusting the options such as position height and width. We also remove this option, as our example model does not have an obstruction. As we continue, we see snow fence options. Since there are parapets on both the right and left, we set these settings. As we continue, we see the snow load parameters section. Firstly, we need to set the exposure coefficient, CE again, on the hint button, we redirect to the table in the code regarding this coefficient. Here we see the CE coefficients for the windswept, normal and sheltered regions. Let's set it to 1 in the sample model and continue. The next coefficient is CT, the thermal coefficient. According to the code, the heat coefficient can be taken as 1, except for, for instance, some glass-covered structures. As we continue, we see the characteristic snow load value. This time, a window comes up that allows us to set the characteristic snow load values according to the location. 
Here, let's define the snow load area as Ankara and the center as Kankaya. Let's write the value of 986 meters as the altitude. Thus, protostructure set the characteristic snow load value for us as 0.11 tons per square meter, and it is stated here as well. All of the operations we have done up to this section were geometric adjustments and determination of parameters. After this stage, protostructure made the calculations taking into account the necessary shape coefficients and specified the loads that should be applied in the load cases section. Here we see the cases of undrifted snow load and drifted snow load. In case of undrifted snow load, we see that 0.88 tons per square meter area load should be applied in the first, second, third and fourth regions of the roof. When we look at the drifted snow loads, we see the snow drifts in the second region and third region of the roof as triangular distributed load starting from 0.3 tons per square meter. We see the canopy load as a triangular distributed load starting from 0.55 tons per square meter, and we see that the drifted snow load due to the parapets should be applied as a triangular distributed load starting from 0.30 to 0. After this stage, we can get the calculation reports for snow loads. When you press the report button, a detailed report will be produced, including the shape coefficients used. In this section, we can see the undrifted snow loads and the drifted snow loads in detail and examine the shape coefficients from this section. We can save the report as PDF or Word. The report will be saved to the reports folder located in the project files. We can keep the saved report open in order to look at the load values during the loading phase. Let's minimize this window and close the report window. After this step, we can close the window with OK. All the geometric and snow parameter settings we made will be kept in memory. When we open this window again, we can see all the values we have entered. Moreover, when we open the project again, the inputs in this window will be kept. Let's close the window with OK. Now let's move on to the loading phase. In the loading phase, we must create the combinations first. Let's open the load cases and combinations window in the loading tab. First of all, let's prepare the combinations by choosing the load cases. In this section, let's include the GQ load cases and also include the snow load case. Cancel other loads and continue. Thus, we have created combinations with only GQ and snow load. In this section, we see the combinations G plus Q plus S as 1.4 G 1.6 Q 1.6 S. Similarly, other combinations were prepared in accordance with the code. In cases where there is a drifted snow load, we need to define a new load case and increase the number of combinations. For this, we define a new load case by clicking the Add button in the Load Cases section. Let's call it SDR and set its description as Drift Load. We choose it as a user-defined vertical load and include it in Story Mass Participation. Then, close the window with OK. Now what we need to do is increase the number of existing combinations and change the name of them. After choosing the second combination, I press the Add button and change the name of the load case here and change the coefficient of the S load case to 0 and the coefficient of the SDR load case to 1.6. Let's do the same for other load cases. This time this S be 0 instead of 0.5 and the SDR will be 0.5. Likewise, in another load combination, we write 0 instead of 1.6 and change the coefficient of SDR to 1.6. Thus, we increase the number of combinations and set their names accordingly. Let's close the window with OK. After creating the load combinations, we can now start the load insertion on the claddings. For this process, we first open the load editor in the loading tab and enable the roof claddings to be displayed. 
In this interface, all objects on the selected floor are displayed. Therefore, what we need to do first is the simplification of the facade cladding. First of all, I turn off the visibility of all objects from the visibility settings that appear in the left side menu and turn on the visibility of only the facades. Then, we set the image to display only the roof claddings and select only the cladding objects on the roof and perform filtering. After this stage, when we start the loading process, we must assign the undrifted snow load case. When we return to the report, we see that the undrifted snow load magnitude in this section is 0.088 ton per square meter. This loading is uniformly distributed over the entire roof cladding. Let's go back to the load editor and run the area load command and determine the load magnitude as 0.088 ton per meter square in the load properties section. Then, let's select all the cladding objects with the dragging method and perform the load assignments on the claddings. Now let's move on to the drifted snow load. In this load case, we choose the SDR load case. We switch to SDR load case for drifted snow load assignments. Then again, we look at the drifted snow load magnitudes specified in the calculation report. Here, a triangular distributed load reaching 0.3 ton per meter square is displayed in the right and left areas of the ridge. In protostructure, cladding objects are divided into pieces at the points where they are attached to the purlins. Therefore, while doing this loading in a triangular shape, we need to distribute the load proportionally over the fragmented cladding areas. Let's perform the loading process starting from 0.3 ton per meter square. First, we bring the image to a suitable position and then select the area load command. In case of SDR load case, when we select the area load command, we enter 0.3 ton per meter square as the load magnitude and we distribute the parts in a suitable way. For example, let's do a similar operation in the second frame on the left side of the ridge, similar to 0.3 in this region. Then I reduce the load a little to 0.2 and do the loading on the other parts. Similarly, let's perform the loading process in 0.1 ton per meter square. In this way, we have assigned the drifted snow loads on the right and left of the ridge in both openings. When we go back to the calculation report, this time we see that there are drifted snow loads in the areas to the right and left of the parapet. In this section, I update the load magnitude as 0.3, while the load case SDR is selected, and I apply this load to the specific area of roof. Since there is a symmetrical formation on the opposite side, we choose this section as well. In the same way, let's apply an area load of 0.2 ton per meter square. Let's apply an area load of 0.1 ton per meter square and apply an area load of 0.05 ton per meter square. In this way, we have assigned the cladding loads. Let's close the window with OK. Now let's assign drifted snow loads to claddings of canopy. After selecting the cladding objects, we select the load editor by right-clicking. Here again, we will load as of area load. To see the load magnitude to be applied, I open the calculation report and look at the section about the canopy. 
the triangular distributed load of 0.55 ton per meter square appears. I go back to the load editor and select the area load. In case of SDR load, we perform 0.55 ton per meter square loading in this section as well. Similarly, in this part, we can perform a load distribution close to the triangular form with the load reduction process. Let's close the window with OK. Up to this stage, we have examined approximate methods and area load assignment methods on claddings. If you wish, you may apply drifted snow loads on the roof beams as an alternative. However, in this case, we should not forget that the purlin design will be affected, since we do not define the loads on the claddings. Let's open the load editor from the load menu to assign loads to the beams. Then we filter the image so that only the roof beams remain. I select the trapezoidal load option in the top menu in order to be able to assign triangular loads on the roof beams. With this option, we can assign a trapezoidal load on the beams. In order to convert this trapezoidal load we add it in the form of a triangular distributed load, we change the settings in the load information section after selecting the load. In this section, loading may be done by specifying percentage or length. Let's use the percent option. Since we will assign load from 0 to 100%, we write the value 100 in the second line. In terms of magnitude, if we remember that the axis distance of the beams is 5 meters and the area load is 0.3 ton per meter square, a magnitude value of 1.5 ton per meter is required. Here I change the magnitude to 1.5. Then we set the values in the third and fourth rows as 0 and press the update button. In this way, we can obtain a triangular distributed load. If the direction of the load is reversed, we will need to change the places of the values in the first and second lines. After selecting this load case that we have created, we can paste it on other beam objects with the copy option. With this method, we have made loading on the beams much more accurately. In the video, we examined how the snow load calculator is used and how the snow load values are applied to the project model. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.